Welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, or One Flew Over the, for short. The film stars the inimitable Jack Nicholson, who is best remembered as the mascot for the Los Angeles Lakers. When One Flew Over The begins, Randall P. McMurphy has just been admitted to a mental institution, which is like a hotel for your brain. He befriends the other residents of his ward and starts up a classic rivalry with the domineering nurse Ratched. Fight! Before long, McMurphy steals a hospital bus and takes his friends on a fishing boat to go fishing for fish. Later, after an impromptu brawl, <laughs> Nurse Ratched gives him shock therapy. Earth women, am I right? <laughs> I don't know if I'm right. McMurphy has had enough, so he decides to escape. Naturally, he throws a party, subscribing to the human credo that alcohol fixes everything. Turns out, he's a pretty great wingman, but he parties too hard. and falls asleep, which puts a damper on the whole escape thing. Nurse Ratched arrives in the morning and notices a few things are out of place. She threatens to tattle on Billy. What worries me is how your mother is going to take this. So he freaks out and kills himself. McMurphy is none too pleased about this and tries to hug Nurse Ratched's neck to All death. Right. <laughs> For this, he gets a lobotomy, which is where they replace part of your brain with corned beef hash. Lobotomy! In the end, the chief gives McMurphy the old Kevorkian treatment, and then shamelessly plagiarizes his escape plan. At its core, One Flew Over The is about the struggle between chaos Sit down. and order. There's no freedom without a little chaos, yet to maintain order there must be oppression. In this shot, McMurphy sees a baby horse running along the edge of a chain link fence. Freedom versus man-made social order. Fight. Little known fact, that horse would go on to star in several more movies, including Seabiscuit, Hidalgo, and Wall Street 2 Money Never Sleeps. McMurphy upsets the established routine of the ward, Fuck the schedule. asking for schedule changes and inspiring resistance during therapy sessions. Okay guys, come on. He teaches his fellow denizens to have fun and encourages them to embrace their disgusting human desires. McMurphy convinces them that not only are they sane, but they are men. You ought to be out in a convertible, bird dog and chicks and banging beaver. What are you <laughs> doing here? As evidenced by their desire to watch sports. It's a fucking home run! <laughs> As he tells Martini during the card game, the residents of the ward are real people. These are real people here. In contrast, Nurse Ratched is an authoritarian. The first time we see her, she is framed by a gate, signifying imprisonment. Whereas McMurphy flies by the seat of his pants, Nurse Ratched is always stoic, and nobody likes a stoic. The only time she shows any emotion is when McMurphy has to literally choke it out of her. And that emotion is ouch. Order is imposed on the patients with an almost religious or cult-like rigor. Medication time. When the patients are given their medicine, one of them receives it on his tongue like communion. McMurphy rejects the communion when he spits the pills out, <laughs> choosing instead to forge his own destiny, one where he doesn't have the icky taste of medicine in his mouth. Maybe next time, she'll choose Flintstones. <laughs> McMurphy soon discovers that he's trapped behind not just physical walls, but mental ones as well. <laughs> Routine is imprisonment. While many of the mental patients were self-admitted because they felt unfit to function in society, their strict schedule makes them dependent. The best thing we can do is go on with our daily routine. Ensuring that they'll stay that way. Meanwhile, my strict schedule ensures that I'm never home in time to see my kids. So maybe it's not all bad. The sink, an old hydrotherapy console, represents the establishment's hold over the patients. The oppressive structure labels them as crazy and nullifies their will to freedom. McMurphy attempts to use it as a means of liberation, but can't do it because he's not tall enough to be strong. Later, when the chief tries to lift the console, he is successful because McMurphy has made him feel as big as a mountain. I feel big as a damn mountain. And also because he is as big as a mountain. At the end, Order has been re-established. People are taking their medicine again, and Nurse Ratched is wearing a cute new accessory. However, Harding and the other guys still gamble, both as a small gesture of rebellion, and because otherwise cards are just boring. Where do you suppose she lives? It seems McMurphy's influence has not completely disappeared. When the chief kills McMurphy, he sets him free, immortalizing him as a symbol of hope that will forever inspire the patients. A little change never hurt, huh? Piss on your fucking walls, oh! Miss Ratched! He also sets the audience free by ending the movie. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrix Wormuloid. To get a lobotomy of your very own, click the subscribe button.